What's up guys, welcome back to DIY with Rye. Today, we're gonna give this table saw a new stand. Now in my most recent video, I went over a full in-depth review on this table saw. I talked about a lot of the pros and cons, and just mainly my thoughts after using this saw for a year. If you haven't checked that out yet, go do it, link right up there. Now towards the end of the video, I discussed how the stand for this saw, while great for being portable and easy to move around from job site to job site, it's not really great for having a dedicated workshop. And just overall, I think we can do better on the stand. So let's go over the design that I've worked up to make this a better functioning piece of equipment. It's kind of a quick sketch, but let me go over a little bit of what I'm thinking here. So right here in the center is where the table saw will sit. Uh, it will be sitting up, and so there'll be some storage space underneath along with on the sides, and there'll be a couple of wings off to the side of either side of the table saw that will allow me to use uh, larger pieces of wood over the table saw versus what I'm able to do now. Um, it's also slightly deeper than the current workbench that I have to allow me to A, have more working space in the shop and B, to continue uh, using the table saw in a larger capacity. All right, so now we've got the design discussed. I went out and purchased all the lumber and supplies that I'll need for this, so let's get to cutting. Now to keep the design as simple as possible, I went with 2x4s for the frame and 3 quarter inch plywood for the tops of the shelves as well as the top of the workbench. Here you can see I'm cutting down the 2x4s and after I make each cut, I make sure to label which piece I'm cutting so that way I don't get confused later on. And here you can see another good reason for making this workbench. At the moment, my table saw cannot handle a full sheet of plywood as it does not have enough support around it to carry that kind of load. So most of the time, I end up breaking down larger pieces of plywood on the ground using my circular saw. With all of the boards cut down, I turned my attention towards assembly. Starting with the bottommost portion of the workbench, I used the simple method of constructing screws and butt joining all of the boards together. Once the outer frame had been built up, I added in some supports that would help carry the weight of the table saw shelf itself. Now I based these measurements off of the dimensions that I had gotten from my table saw. If you're going to build something like this yourself, I recommend making sure that you get the overall dimensions so that way you can make sure your table saw is well supported within the base. With the bottom of the workbench completed, I moved my way up to the table saw shelf. Now this is just a 2x4 box that'll have a piece of plywood attached to the top. And this should be plenty strong enough to hold the weight of the table saw as well as any sort of forces exerted on the saw when you're cutting. One thing I found to be super helpful while assembling everything was to pre-start my screws before assembling boards together. This allowed for a much easier process during assembly. I opted to do the top of the workbench last as the geometry for the frame made it a little bit funky due to the cutout for the table saw. Because the frame pieces for the wings are on the smaller side, I opted to assemble those separately and then attach them to the rest of the frame.
And the final part of frame assembly was to attach the legs. Now I opted to attach them first to the top of the workbench in order to ensure that the top was as level as I could possibly get it. So here we are, morning of day two. As you guys can see, some stuff happened off camera. Last thing that I was able to get was building up the subframe for the bottom top and support for the base of the table saw, but I didn't get the legs on camera because I don't have a big shop space and so it's kind of difficult to navigate uh, setting up a camera to film everything. But coming back here today, we are going to continue moving forward with this. Uh, I'm going to go get some washers so that way we can properly mount these rolling casters that I got to move the entire assembly around a lot easier. I'm going to finish attaching all of these vertical frame pieces. We'll get the plywood finished, cut up, mounted, and we should be able to get this done today. So without further ado, let's Get back to it. Now an important quick tip here. If you're not using construction screws, make sure to pre-drill your holes, especially if you're using longer screws like I am, as this avoids the risk of accidentally stripping out a screw. I definitely did that a few times while installing these casters, and I don't want you guys to experience the same headaches that I did. Also, work smarter, not harder. Flip your workbench so that way you're screwing down into the ground instead of at an angle. Come on, Ryan, what are you thinking? With the casters on, I flipped the workbench upright and began attaching the tabletop using some drywall screws I had lying around. For the cutout for the table saw, I used my measurements from the saw itself as well as measurements from the opening to make sure that everything was sized correctly. I also did this step now instead of earlier as this would allow me to be working upright instead of on the ground. So I'm trying to set up the base for the table saw. I've noticed that the rear supports are actually set up at an angle. It's probably due to me miscalculating measurements. And so it's proving to be very difficult to try and get the base for the table saw into the position that I need it. To solve that, however, my idea is going to be cutting off the top of these so that way it's only supported from the bottom. Now this should provide enough support for the table saw to sit in. Once the shelf had been mounted, I attached the cutoff from the tabletop and test fit the table saw in the opening to make sure that everything fit well. All right, now we've got everything pretty much wrapped up. We've got the top of the workbench in, table saw is in place. The last thing to do now is to add the bottom shelf to this workbench. It'll allow for storage of some smaller tools and also give a proper home for a lot of the push sleds that I use on the table saw. So let's get to that. Double checking the measurements on the bottom shelf and setting up a temporary fence, I was finally able to use the table saw in its new setup. And even though I don't have the saw secured down at this point, it's still awesome to see how well this new setup is gonna work. Now I cut down the bottom shelf again because of these standoff legs for the table saw shelf. 
I measured out to the opening that I would need for the front half, and then for the back part, I measured where those legs came down in order to cut out small pockets for them to go through. And that's a wrap. This is a game changer for the shop. Going from just having a table saw on a quick, easy stand to now having a dedicated workbench for it is gonna be huge for working on larger projects. I'm also really loving the added functionality and storage that this workbench offers, including being able to house a lot of the different sleds and things that I use on the table saw, and also just kind of keeping them close by instead of scattered throughout the shop. I think that's going to be huge moving forward. Now some of the things that I've noted while finishing putting everything together here that I would love to add in in the future are a few things. I'm thinking about adding some T-track to the sides here to build on uh, an additional rip fence that can be used once the rip fence that comes with the table saw has reached the edge. Another thing that I've noted is that I would love to build in a dedicated dust collection system throughout my whole workbench setup, maybe some dust ports on the side, and dedicated plumbing across both of these workbenches is really going to be helpful moving forward. And then finally, coming back to my original workbench, I think that I'm going to end up bringing it up to the same height as this new workbench, maybe replacing the top, haven't gotten there yet, but at least making it so that way everything is level going across and we have good support of all pieces moving across the table. I think that wraps it up for this one. If you enjoyed the video, of course, leave a like. That always helps me out a ton. If you built something like this yourself or have any just general tips and tricks for building workbenches like this, I would love to hear it. But until next time.